This is my mission, San Diego de Oklahoma. It was founded by Father Juna Perro Serra in 1769. It was the mother of all the missions in Alta California. So I hope you like my video of the whole so thing. So over here is Casa de los Padres. This room is originally two rooms. And the front and the side wall originally to the late 1770s. The fireplace is not, there was a fireplace and it's not the, um, the mission period, but perhaps it came from the US military period, um, actually when they came over here to store cavalry and artillery companies. Um, this furniture is not original, but set up in the, as a monk's room and would have been furnished. And we can go downstairs here. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, they would have been a lot more weathered if they weren't restored. And so you can obviously tell those this has been very restored. So mm -hmm. cut over here. Cut. Let's Franciscan this habits. This looks like um, a Franciscan habits uh, coat or something. Well, read the, read the sign. The outer garment worn by friars is called a hat. The bulky gray wool habit and on the left is made from this display. It is the type of the color of a habit that was worn by Father Juan Serra. In 1897, the Franciscans began, began wearing brown habits. The brown habit on the right is a style of habit worn by the old FN friars today. The cincher that's the belt. Or three knots, which symbolize the OFM vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. The hood with the habits is called the capuche and includes a shoulder and back cut from it. So this is the baptistry. It was one of the only original parts of the mission um, still here today and was used to um, convert to Christianity people and or Native Americans who are not Christian yet. Okay, so this is the statue of St. Anne behind the baptistry um, pool. And she was the mother of the Virgin Mary, gave birth to Jesus, and as you know, was a very important religious person. In and she was the patron saint of all mothers. Okay, so these are the front church entrance doors. They were um, just, they look much like the original, but they were just replicas that are hand carved. Okay, so up here is the fire loft that the, in, the original fire would have sung from to sing the religious songs that they had done in the sermons for this church. And the entrance is from the outside. Um, I don't think we're gonna see that today. Okay, so um, these are the church windows. Do you, do you notice how they're so high? It's just because um, like, um, they uh, got less like strain on the windows because they're not lower and the weight isn't pushing down on the windows as much. So they won't break as easily, and um, for protection of the inhabitants, um, they were high, so they're protected from attacks. Okay, so here is the altar behind me, that table over there. Um, it it has no real record to tell that what exactly it all this looked like, but the records they do have say that they were made from original planks of the boats, possibly the ones they used to sail here. Okay, so this over here behind the altar is the Roretto, uh, the big wooden structure with the niches to hold the statues. There's about two of them on the wooden structure. There's also niches to the side of it. Mm -hmm. And it was painted with 
local mineral pigments and decorated from the designs stated in the Old Testament. So, Okay, so here is the sanctuary cross on the floor, and um, Father Jaime, the first California Christian martyr, was buried under that cross. And the red candle that burns at the top of the cross is to commemorate Father Jaime and his death by the Indians who attacked or what might have started as a raid on the San Diego de Alcala turned into a full burn down attack and in the actions Father Jaime was beaten to death. Okay, so just to mention this as an extra fact, this church is as of today 150 feet long, 35 feet wide, and 29 feet tall. Okay, so this is the Campanario that was part of the 1813 real rebuild of the mission by the American cavalry and artillery, but then abandoned, but it is still here. It differs from a bell tower because a bell tower has enclosings to cover the bell and it is less seen, and the Campanario is just a wall with openings to hold the bell. Okay, so the upper part of the Campanario was destroyed in an 1860 earthquake, but Fortunately, the drawings had been made prior to the building, the construction of the Campanario, and was able to be rebuilt accurately. The top, upper half, or upper part of the Campanario was 45 feet tall, while the facade was only 35 feet tall. Okay, so the um, the two or three original parts of the Campanario are the two bells on the bottom and the bump, the wall that hold up the Campanario. And the two bottom bells were only recovered after a very long search by Father Yuval. Okay, so this is the fountain of St. Francis of Assisi. He was the founder of um, the group of monks that of which Junipero Serra belonged. And he had a special love of animals and is often depicted with birds. Okay, so these are the garden molinas who, who, which were used for the coarse grinding of cereal grains. They ate um, boiled grains similar, bowls of boiled grains similar to porridge two times a day and a stew of meat and meat and vegetables at noon. Okay, so these um, rusted crosses are made of adobe and burnt mission tile tiles. Um, they are erected in memory of the mission Indians who died on this side. Okay, so this is the statue of St. Joseph. Um, he has, he was founder of some things in the mission and he saved the mission by um, spotting a ship with no anchor that was heading for Monterey Bay but swerved into San Diego Bay and gave them food and supplies to continue the making of the um, Alta California mission. So this is the Pieta Garden. It looks like it was very spiritual and religious garden. Probably had some meaning or purpose to Jesus, as you see here, after he came off the cross. And, and if you studied a little, the American history came back on Easter Sunday. Are you? So that's why Easter is 